Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've been following me on Facebook, um, The Dark Hollow, then you know that we've been having some technical issues as far as getting sound and video quality to kind of match up. I've either ended up with good sound or good video, but I never could seem to get both at the same time. So I had to do a little upgrading on equipment and um, hopefully now everything will be going good. I was really hoping to get this started at least for the month of October because it's like my favorite month. Um, I am coming in a little late. It is um, now October 11th as of recording this video. So what I'm going to try to do now is get a video uploaded um, at least a couple of times a week until Halloween and I'm hoping um, on Halloween we, we will actually be premiering our first ever ghost hunt. Um, we've got that in the works right now as far as setting up a date and everything going to do it and then um, a couple of days for what little editing I know how to do which is not much the bare minimum so everything you see in the video is going to be real because believe it or not I really don't know much about video editing at all um, it's kind of a learn as you go also like I said in my um, introduction video and uh, I may be putting a new one of those up as well but what I like I said I'm as far as the um, ghost hunting or whatever goes everything that you see in my videos is going to be a hundred percent real simply because I feel like if you um, fake activity then you're just cheating yourself my videos are for entertainment I'm not gonna say they're not but as far as ghost hunting goes for me I am in it for the real thing I want to experience it I want to see it and I want to know that that it can't be explained um, other channels some even that I follow that I enjoy watching and everything have been accused of being fake and have also kind of <laughs> some of them actually have been proven to um, fake some of their content and to me that that's it, it's yeah it's entertaining they're fun to watch um but I want to see something real I want to see something that's an experience something that is you know that that's real that I know that no one has um faked or pretended or any of that kind of thing and so that's what you will get from my ghost hunting videos that being said this is um the first video in a new series that i want to try to do it's a new series called coincidence or cursed now i don't know where a lot of people stand on the curse but you've got the curse you've got like old wives tales you know um and then you have the part of like voodoo curses and uh, people that will put curses on items or something right before they die or you know Egyptian curses and all this stuff that people kind of believe in or don't believe in but I found a couple of stories so far um, and I've done you know research just a little bit on them and everything that seem Will they just make you question on whether or not is it a curse or is it, you know, just a series of unfortunate events that connect each other. Um, but this first one actually does have documented cases associated with it. So that should be interesting. And with that, let's get into it. Our first curse or coincidence is the Busby Stoop chair. Now the Busby Stoop Inn is situated in Thirst, North Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. 
The odd name of the pub derives from an old owner, Thomas Busby. Local legend has it that the chair belonged to Thomas Busby. And um, he was considered a thief and a drunkard who lived in North, North Yorkshire in the later part of the 1600s. Now, Busby married Elizabeth, the daughter of a small-time petty crook, Daniel Autry, who lived near the village of Kirby Wisk. I guess, I think that's how you pronounce it right. I hope so. Um, Aut Autry had purchased a farm after moving to the area from Leeds. His house, which he called Dauntry Hall, or Donati Hall, ideal for Otty. I'm sorry if I'm totally screwing up these pronunciations. Hmm. Enabled him to continue with his illegal coining activities in um, relative seclusion. It was even reported that Otty had built within the house a hidden chamber which was connected to the cellar via a secret passageway. Now, Busby, who was also the original owner of the inn near Sand Hutton and just three miles from Donati Hall, became Audie's partner in crime. The details of what happened that fatal last day of Audie's life are vague. Audie and Busby may have argued earlier that day, but over what it is not nobody knows um it could have been something to do with elizabeth the coining business or almost anything their relationship was known to be far from harmonious anyway so um busby often in a foul mood with autry for some reason or another later busby found Audie in Donati Hall and bludgeoned him to death with a hammer and he hid the body in the woods. The authorities soon found Audie's remains and arrested Busby at the pub in the summer of 1702. Now Busby was tried and sentenced to death for murder at the York and here's another word that I will probably butcher Assars. His punishment was to be gibbeted or hung from a gibbet. His body dipped in tar and his remains displayed on his stoop post attached to the gibbet in full view of his inn. The inn was soon after renamed the Bus Busby Stoop Inn, a name which it retained until it closed in 2012. According to documented witnesses' accounts, while Busby was being led to the gallows, he screamed curses at the onlookers, saying, Anyone who should ever sit in my chair will die a horrible death, just as I am about to do. Now, there's also a rumor that said that um, he was offered like a last request and one of his last requests was to have a drink at his inn and he sat in his favorite chair and that's where he made the proclamation that whoever sat in his chair would soon die a horrible death so one of those is you know the way that the the story says this curse came about since then, many people have reported seeing the ghost of Thomas Busby at or near the hangman's gibbet with a noose around his neck. But it's the curse of his favorite chair that has become the subject of folklore and mystic intrigue. There are verified accounts of numerous deaths after sitting in the Busby stoop chair soon afterwards. According to local legend, this seemingly innocuous piece of furniture has been responsible for more deaths than most serial killers. One esti estimate puts the number of victims at over 60. Now, 
here's we get into documented proof and as far as documented proof goes I'm assuming it's more of um, death records or police reports or whatever that was done at the time um, so this is I guess what you'll base your conclusion on of whether you think this was just a series of accidents or was it a curse that has to do with the chair the first reported death alleged to be associated with the death chair is that of a chimney sweep who along with a friend sat in the chair whilst having a drink one evening in 1894 the sweep never made it home that night being completely inebriated he laid down on the road to sleep the next morning his body was found hanging from the post next to the gibbet his death was ruled as a suicide but in 1914 the friend whom the chimney sweep had spent his last hours with admitted on his deathbed to having robbed and murdered his friend later during the second world war the pub became a popular drinking spot with RCAF airmen. The airmen would go to each other to sit in the chair. Those that took up the challenge never returned from their missions. Now that's okay. <laughs> I understand people daring each other to do very stupid things. And whether you believe in curses or not believe in curses. When it comes down to your life, do you really, really want to take that bet? I'm just saying, why why risk it? Why, why, you know, even if you don't believe in it, why in the world would you want to test your theory with your life? Just saying. Maybe it's just me. In 1968, a couple of years before, Tony Earnshaw took over the running of the pub. He overheard two airmen dare each other to sit in the chair. They both did. Returning to the airfield, their car left the road and crashed into a tree. They both died on the way to the hospital. Through the early 1970s, the chair seemed to claim a number of victims, including a cleaning lady who was diagnosed with a brain tumor after knocking into the chair, a number of cyclists and motorcyclists who suffered fatal road accidents, a hitchhiker who was run over after having spent two nights at the pub, and a local man who died of a heart attack shortly after sitting in the condemned chair. A group of builders having a drink at the pub conjoled the youngest of their group into sitting on the chair back at the site. The man fell through the roof of the building and landed on the concrete ground below. This death proved to be the final straw for Earnshaw and he banished the chair to the celery. A delivery man, however, from the brewery was in the cellar one day when he decided to try out the chair. He commented to Earnshaw that it was far too comfortable to be left down there. He was killed shortly afterwards when his van went off the road. Soon after Earnshaw must have decided that the chair despite being a profitable tourist attraction, was too dangerous to keep any longer. In 1978, Earnshaw donated it to the Thirst Museum. So, I think my opinion of it is, and because I, I'm not a great big one to believe in curses or old wives' tales or, uh, you know, bad luck, good luck charm things, and to me, I mean, if you go by the dates, and of course, from the time Busby was, um, by the time Busby was hung, the, there's a lot of years in between each deaths, I guess, until it gets up to the, you know, the 1970s. But also, too, you can look at it, I mean... 
the ones that are, are having um, vehicle accidents and motorcycle accidents and as I, they're, they're leaving a pub are we sure they're not intoxicated I mean we all know how um, deadly drunk driving can be and this was of course in um, an error before you know a lot of seat belts and uh, no drink you know no, don't drink and drive and and all this stuff um and as far as um the young man who fell through the roof on a building and stuff i've you know known roofers and stuff and it's a very dangerous job on the whole um accidents can always happen that way um you know just and the cleaning lady with the brain tumor she could have had the brain tumor before she bumped into the chair it was only diagnosed after um i don't know it just seems like to there could be too many natural things to associate it with um <clears throat> just sitting in a chair but like i said i you know i wouldn't sit in the chair um just because you don't believe in something doesn't mean it's not real. Um, but tell me what you think down in the comments below. And if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button under the video. Because the likes really help me out. Also, if you like the content on my channel, please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out. And I would really like to grow this channel. Um... I really do enjoy making these videos and doing the research and all this and like I said we're getting into um, we're finally getting the ghost hunt started um, starting with this first one that's what we've been waiting on is just trying to get everything organized to get the first one done because once the first one gets done then we can kind of really know what we're doing and get contacts and and get um, going on some of these things so please 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 if you like this content please subscribe hit the notification so that you'll know when i put a new video up follow um the dark hollow fan page on um facebook um i also have a patreon but i'm not, not doing a whole lot with it right now simply because um i don't have enough subscribers to really concentrate on patreon um but keep an eye out i do have a couple of things i'm going to put up on facebook i have uh photographs of the place that we're getting to go ghost hunt i also have some photographs that were taken at waverly hills last year um i'm going to put up some of those they they didn't really turn out that great but i'm still going to try to put some up um but keep watching this keep watching the channel because like i said i have got several videos that have been ready to be recorded for a long time it was just getting the technical issues worked out but please like subscribe and i'll see you all another time bye